Okay, um, so we're ta- we're talking about some comic books that we're reading because it's not just about specking and that's just about, just not just about collecting. Um, we're talking about reading comic books, and these, this is how we decided to do it because we've done a handful of things. We've done breakdown videos. We've done like top ten lists. We've done a lot of different stuff. But weekly polls. We've done weekly polls. There's like a fine line that you have to walk with spoilers. And entertainment. How much do you want to ruin the plot of a book when you're trying to, you know, put it on people's radar when they're just like, I watched Tom and Ryan break it a whole down. I'm trying to get people to read it, Ryan. I don't it. need to read the damn book. People need they to read spend their a whole comics. hour on it. Duh! Well, people need to read their damn comics, Ryan. That's what I'm trying to say, comic fam. And, it, and, it, it, and it's from here. It's from a place in my heart. It's a real thing. Ryan knows what I'm talking about. Ryan, you keep me grounded, man. Aww. You do. That's good. You really do, man. I'm very depressing, so it's good for bringing people down. No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking about so mean? much in the week, and I'm looking at eBay so much. I'm specking on this, and I'm buying this, and it's like... Just read them, man. I'm like, oh, yeah, but we got to read them, because I know Ryan's going to ask me, yo, dude, have you read Stray Dogs? I sold one comic in my entire life, and it was in the last couple of weeks. What was it? What'd you sell? The Boss Logic Black Adam cover for Justice League Endless, whatever, Endless Winter. It was a terrible crossover event, and I saw that was spiking. And I got rid of it. You got rid of it? What'd you sell it for? I uh, gave it to Russ. You gave it to Russ? Russ gave it to... Russ sold it to a uh, customer. There you he go. Handed me some, I think, $40 or something in cash. Okay. There's a lot more than I paid for it. So I don't there care. you go. I'm never going to read it again. It sucked. All right. Well, here we go. Spoiler alert. First thing we're talking about today... Come on, baby. Let's do it. We're talking about Stray Dogs. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, uh, dude. Can you tell? You're, you're excited? I'm, t- I'm excited. We're getting into this book right here, right now. And uh, bear with me, Comic Fan. I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm thinking we're going to actually change the screen just a little bit. But Ryan, why don't you give us a little bit of information on Stray Dogs while I adjust this? Stray Dogs is kind of, I, I go back and forth. This might be my favorite book from Image. I freaking love this book, Comic Fan. This is, it's so good. Somebody in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, because I could easily be wrong here, but I'm fairly certain this book is drawn by the person who draws the My Little Pony comic. I'm pretty sure it is, actually. Which makes a lot of sense when you open it up and look inside. It looks adorable. It's about puppies. <laughs> Dude, okay, let's, let's do this right here. Stray Dogs, every single person needs to be reading this comic book. Damn it! Read it. That's yes. what I have to say. This is one of those like books that I've given to a couple different people and they read it and they go, oh my gosh, I didn't know comics could be so damn cool. It's five issues. It's going to be a short little thing, which is pretty heartbreaking. I want, I want more of this. You want more? I want more, man. It's an under, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an really underdog. Good. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. It's an underdog. I mean like, all right, so stray dogs, we have, uh, we have dogs. We, we have do. little, little animals here and I want to just kind of showcase a little bit here. We have a, like what is seemingly a. It's almost like you're reading it and it's like a kid's story. We're going to talk about issue number one, okay? Because we're talking That's about true. comics that you got to be reading. If you're not reading it, you need to be. If issue you are, you need to be grateful. Out. Issue three came out a week ago or something mm-hmm. like that. So it's it's yeah. not that far ahead. So we don't want to spoil much. That's right. We're just right. going to give you a little bit of issue one. That's right. But we have a dog, a dog that's getting adopted. And Sophie right here, um, there's a- She's com- going to the vet. That's not even an adoption. She's, she's sitting on her owner's lap at the vet. That's right. For you know vet reasons. And what's fun she's is scared. that there's this aspect of- I guess you know it, but you don't really know it, that dogs have a very short-term memory. Mm-hmm. Um, or rather, they lack a short-term memory. They really can't remember. They're dumb. It. Dogs are dumb. I've said that my whole life. It, yeah, they're not very smart. They're not like cats, That's kind of why they're cute, though. Like, yeah. dogs are lovable idiots. Yeah, cats have this ability to be, like, plotting to kill you all the time, yes. where dogs are just kind of like, hey, I'm a dog. Food. You know, food. Oh, that's nice. Right. You know? Um, but in this particular comic, there's a really fun thing that they point out, which is, like, there's, like, very little short-term memory that dogs have. And that becomes important in this story, because this right here is a dark story. Like... You have, you have these like really fun dogs. And then what do we have? We have uh, other dogs because this dog gets adopted. She gets adopted. Yes. Sophie, I think is her name. Sophie. Yeah. She gets adopted by this man who brings her home. And this guy has a whole bunch of other dogs. It's written by Tony Fleeces and Trish Fornster. Uh, Fornster. Forstner. Forstner. And it's Image Comics. But yes, it's Sophie. Okay. There you go. So yeah, she gets brought home to this guy's house, and he he look. It looks like he's maybe like rescuing dogs or something. He's got all these a like, bunch of dogs. Yeah, a bunch of random dogs in his house, but he also has like dead animals. <laughs> like all, he's a taxidermy enthusiast, which is a little 
Little red flag. It's not a good sign, man. It's not terrible. Have you ever known someone who was into taxidermy? In your life? Not comment. No. I want to see in the chat. Does anyone know anybody who's into taxidermy things? Or is there anyone in the chat that's into it? Yeah, let us know, please. I want to know. Before I wanna we know. offend you. I've never... Norman Bates owned. was into taxidermy and Psycho. He was. Which is a, you know... A little foreshadowing there that he a little bit. had his dead mom stuffed in the basement. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Shame on me for ruining a 70-year-old movie or whatever. That's like saying the reveal of the birds, the ending. They're all robots. They're all robots. Those aren't birds. real birds. <laughs> they weren't real the whole time. <laughs> CGI. All right, so we have uh, Sophie who's getting adopted right now. Um, she meets a bunch Look of Look how these. lovable this looks. That's why I like this comic so yes. much. It's so lovable. The Can you the, zoom in? Is this what they see? Dude, we can, yeah, we this can looks so it. small. No, no, no. It's it's not that bad. Okay. There we go. We can zoom in a little bit more. It looks so there adorable. Go. Look at this. Look at that, like how, like the colors, the the way that the panels are organized. It's so clean. It, it looks, looks like a, like kid's, like a book. kid's book. Exactly. And this is not a kid's book. Look at this pug right there. Look at these animals. My favorite is the one right next to the pug, the goofy one with the big eyes. Yeah, he's so cool. Book. Yeah. There you go. Um, but what do we have They're here? all characters, though. These are the characters of the book, and they all have personalities. They all have names. I know. Like, one of the first things that this uh, that Sophie does is she has an accident in the new house. And that's, like, for real, you know? Like, if you ever had a uh, a new dog or a new animal, it's some, something you deal with, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, they're pissing all over the place. This is what you have to deal with. you got to get that nature's miracle. Shout out to all our pet owners who knows the goodness of it's nature's, nature's miracle. Nature's miracle is, is, is a sponsor of the show. Yeah, if you didn't know this, this whole time, they're the main business funding all the I don't the even use the toilet here. Yeah, yeah, Ryan just goes. I've and then wet we spray myself right it. now. See, the trick is with Nature's Miracles, you have to spray it and then leave it because it actually destroys the enzymes. The, you should, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and Ryan knows what I'm talking about because he abandoned toilets a long time ago. I don't, yeah, it's there true. All right, but um, what's interesting about this book here, aside from Sophie having kind of a rough time, you know, she's going into a new place. Her owner, she had to get adopted, but she doesn't even really remember what happened and why she had to get adopted. All of a sudden she's getting adopted because she has that short-term memory loss because she's an animal, right? Well, stupid animal. we have a reveal at the end that's <laughs> going to make every single person want to read this uh, book, okay? Um, Sophie is gifted something very important. She gets this scarf. scarf. Yep. Right? She gets a scarf from her new owner and she sniffs it and then she remembers. This image right here is when I knew that we were in for something good. Because what does she remember, Ryan? She realizes or she has a like a like a half remembered kind of flashback of her lady, she keeps calling her her, her prior owner. Yes. Getting strangled to death. That's right. With her own scarf, which you if you look back at the beginning in the vet's office, that lady has the red scarf on while the Sophie is in her lap. That's right. It's a little, little tie-in back to the beginning of the book. Turns out this guy, this person, appears to be murdering people and stealing their dogs. Her owner, her new owner, who's rescuing all these animals, is a murderer. And she's realizing it in this moment for the first time. This is psychological horror in the perspective of a damn dog. It's beautiful. Comic books. That's what I have to say, Comic Fam. This is this is exactly what it's all about right here. So, Comic Fam, get Stray Dogs on your damn poll list. It looks I, like a kid's book, but give it a chance because it is not. It's not. No, no. I wouldn't. I, this is definitely something that I wouldn't be reading with with the children. However, it's damn good. Um, you know, I just read issue two. You read issue three. I have it on my desk right now. I'm going to get to it. But gets worse. <laughs> it gets it's hardcore. A lot worse. Okay, this yeah. is another one that I want to chat about today. Speaking um, of hardcore. You know what? And there's going to be a lot of members who have already read this. I don't care. We're going to chat about Berserker. Come on. It's relevant. I mean, the second issue just dropped the other day. It did. And you know what? Um, issue you read two. Are you, are you oh, current? I'm, I'm, ca I'm current. Okay. Um, what okay. I'm going to say is we're not going to get into issue two, but what I will say is that the, because uh, this is like one of those nice things. This These books have come out, and if you haven't read it, you need to read it because we've already read it and we can tell you that's pretty damn good. Um, or if it doesn't interest you, you know, whatever. We're going to talk about it. But we will get into it because there are some really good damn books that people are missing out on. And by us waiting a little bit, I feel like we can kind of spoil issue one. Berserker is relevant. It is, according to Ross Ritchie, the most Successful comic? John's comic for kids says, it's not for kids. I gave it to my girls, Ryan. Oh, no. Yeah, but you're a cool dad. You Uncle know? Ryan has steered them wrong. <laughs> I don't know if they still call me that. John's comic for <laughs> kids is a cool dad. He lets yes. his kids read. Um, He's a cool dad. Because, you know, that's just what it is. If you're a good parent, you can, kids can handle it. You can give your kids murder comics. Not that if your kids can't handle it, you're not a good parent. Because I don't know. I don't have children. So it's none of my not matter. To have them, yeah. There you go. There you go. 
Right. You don't have any kids? No. I hope not. Also, some reason I think I had a couple of come. Yeah, couple I mean, kids. I left them in the car. Yeah. It's really hot. Yeah. I cracked the window, though. Yeah. They're fine. They'll be fine. <laughs> Ryan. You can get a ticket for leaving your kids in the car. <laughs> I don't know. I don't oh my gosh, we're gonna find out. Okay, Not an issue. no, no, we have a uh, berserker issue number one. Um, we have no children. Okay, but what we do have is an amazing <laughs> dude. This comic is awesome, dude. I don't like. This is one of those ones where it's like I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. I feel like I'm not in the right age bracket. You either need to be like somebody who's nostalgic for '90s comics to appreciate this, or 14. Like I'm yeah, somewhere in that's that, actually in, in between both. Pretty of those. astute, Ryan. Yeah, but, I'm a, and I'm an astute man. You know. I was needing more 90s vibes for my comic books and I got it with Berserker. And you know why? Because this is just straight up aggression. It's like, it's hardcore. It's Keanu freaking Reeves, you know? Like, what, what can you say? I mean, first off, it's not a whole lot of dialogue in the issue one. No. And I would tell you that by issue two, there's a lot more in the origin story. Issue two fixed all of my issues with that I had with the first one. Which, they is, had a, a, which is a they, good thing. They had they, to start out with a bang, dude. Yes, they really did. And they several do. bangs in this book. Um, I, I was actually thinking like we can have this whole section be about the kill count of issue number one. Oh, you're going to um, do that? Okay. No, but we don't. We don't. I did not do that because then I would be spoiling Thank the whole goodness. book because it's filled. It's like a kill in every murder. murder. Yeah, there's, you're going through Muck it. duck, if you would. Yes. Um, but no, basically you have Keanu Reeves as an immortal. He's Wolverine. He's, he's Wolverine, but taller and without claws. There you go. You Wolverine. can't kill him, and he kills everyone else. That's like right. That. Like, Just like this, with the brains and, you know, and the blood and the violence. And, um, you know, what's cool about this book is that aside from it already being, like, straight for option status, straight to option status and animation status, which is, like, double option. Double option. Because he's an immortal, there is a past, there is a present, and then there is a eagerness to die for this character that is he's sick of living forever he doesn't it's like does he is he sick of living i've seen some some people say that like that's what he, he wants said. to he doesn't he wants to be able to die sure he doesn't say he wants to die now but he wants to be able to die <laughs> someday someday I'm, st I'm still good being immortal now but Eventually. essentially you have a rampaging I mean, literally, this, this book is he just, the whole is, issue is just Keanu Reeves a rampaging. There's one um, kill scene that I thought worth uh, showcasing here. Uh, it's this one right here, where he rips the arm and beats the person to death. It's pretty hardcore. Not for, for Keanu Reeves, not the actual character that is losing his arm and Screaming being beaten to death. Yeah, he's screaming. He's not enjoying it. It looks but like. Can't you imagine uh, like Keanu Reeves doing this on screen? Like this is essentially John Wick, but I still haven't seen fancy. that movie. Maybe that would. Uh, maybe that's the reason I don't like this comic. Maybe if I watch John Wick, I would appreciate Berserker more. Okay. Well, what's fun is that this is a character that's working with the government. He's like an agent because in working with the government, they are assisting him in figuring out his memories and trying to understand who he is to see if they can. They're doing like figure tests it all on him out. and stuff. They're trying you know? to figure out, yeah, well, why he's not dying. Yeah, like he can literally do the Wolverine status injuries, and in the meantime, they're going to use him for assassination missions. That's right. I mean, literally, this whole page actually, like, now that you say Wolverine, I'm like, damn, dude, that's this actually a very clear. Homage. Like, like I'm, yeah. I'm looking at Weapon X right now. It yeah. just clicked in my head. Like, I didn't even really associate Weapon X or the Wolverine narrative with this until this moment. But that's why we got Fire Guy Ryan on the show. Started the fight. So what we're going to do now is reveal the ending because this is why you got to read this book. He That's was born 80,000 years ago. He's a caveman. He's a caveman. All right. We have a caveman from the past. It's Keanu Reeves. It's Neo. It's everything we want. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. And I can say safely as somebody who did not appreciate issue one, if this part appeals to you, then the following issue elaborates on this. You kind of get more of his backstory and his reasoning and his logic and more information is given. There's, there's you not find just, out why he is yes. an immortal. It, it's not a big secret. As Tom it, said, you have to open with a bang. You do. And that's actually why I wanted to bring this up today. Because this book, first off, as you said, if you're not like into 90s, just like Rampage kind of comics, or just like, what was the other analogy? 14 years old. Yeah, or I would have loved this as, a, as in middle school. It's a little school. harsh. It's a little harsh. But in I, middle but school, I, dude, when you watch like Friday the 13th and people are getting their heads chopped off yeah. and getting smashed into trees and sleeping bags and stuff. But you don't like that? 
That's the coolest part. When Come you're on, a little dude. kid, I just watched all of those movies like a week I, ago. You literally just told me you watched all the Friday the Thirteenth movies. And they suck now. Dude, they <laughs> don't suck, man. You so just got to be in the right headspace uh, for it. Come uh, on, man. It's just like this. Ugh. Oh my gosh, Ryan. Oh my gosh. I need story. Okay, he needs story. Okay, issue Comic Family needs story. story. So, um, issues two, issue two has story. I've confirmed it. I've read it. I enjoyed it. I like Berserker issue one out the gate, but I like it even more after reading issue two, which is why I'm telling the comic fam, get on Berserker. And it's only 12 issues, which is another thing I like. I appreciate a story that ends Robert Kirkman. (laughs) Oh, he's throwing shots. I like it. But you know what? I'm going to make this next one easy for you, Ryan. Let's just give him something, something good to chat about right here, right now. Let's do it. Radiant Black. We were just chatting about this writer. Hit him with just a surprisingly like refreshing superhero tale. I was saying that Stray Dogs might be my favorite image book, but Stray Dogs and Radiant Black are both released on the same Wednesday every month. They're both three issues in so far. And every time I finish reading one of them, I think it's my favorite book from Image. I go back and forth. And also Two Moons is really good and Silver Coin from Image. (laughs) There's a lot. But these two are kind of at the top for me. I have to say, Ryan, I'm, I'm curious because you would know better than me. The lead character in Radiant Black, we have Nathan, uh, Nathan Bern, Bar, Burnett, not Barnett. Shout out Nathan Barnett. He can dance and play video games like a really cool dude. Do you another online comedian, Joe Rogan guy? No, he's even cooler than uh, Joe Rogan. He's even cooler than Joe Rogan. Yeah, dude, Joe Rogan's not that cool. I, I, I don't really care. <laughs> he's too like short. Him. He's too short for me to That's like. That's it. I'm just kidding. That's like is really mean. But um, but Nathan Burnett, um, he's the lead of Radiant Black. Is Kyle Higgins writing himself as a superhero in this comic book? It feels like it. And I think a lot of times when writers write themselves, that's when the book kind of works a lot. They say write what you know. That's like the the basic advice for writers. And I get that vibe from him reading this book. This is the first panel. This is like, uh, it's very real. You I know, think of for this a book. superhero origin story, like it's literally starts out with, yo, I'm in debt. I have no money and I got to move back in with my parents. And I'm a writer. For me, this is a combo between Invincible and Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, dude. That's exactly what I was thinking, too. A lot of people have been comparing this to Invincible and something else that I can't... Power Rangers. They're convinced because, oh, it's Kyle Higgins and it's Power Rangers. But no, maybe the design of the superheroes a little bit. The art kind of looks like... But no, Ultimate Spider-Man. That's what this is like. This feels like... In a a good way. This feels like Bendis dialogue. Yeah, you That's need a, you need does, a better fire guy. I, get, I know, I need a, I've been a better one, but it's like, I'm, I'm feeling it right now, man, because I freaking love this comic. Anyways, explain what we're looking at. This book gives, uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at a, as we just saw in the last panel, a very financially struggling person. Young man, 20s, 30s. He's a writer. He's like 20s, 30. Moving back in with his family. He owes like 40 grand in debt. He is struggling financially. Hard. He's got less than $50 to his name. And he has to, right here, we can see he's moving back in with his parents. He's a struggling writer. Struggling because he's not really trying. He's not. He's not writing much. Like if he if he wanted to, he could try more. And I think that's one of the keys to being a writer is like writing, <laughs> is doing it. And he talks to his friend a lot and says like, yeah, I just kind of have not been doing it. He's he's not really trying. His dad is. Uh, there's a lot of really good dialogue between him and his family, and this is one of those things in comics where sometimes it loses me. You're a big fan of Brian Michael Bendis. Yes. It's one of my biggest complaints. And it's one of the most common complaints is his ability to write dialogue. Sometimes he overdoes it. Yes. You know, and that's okay. Justice League right now, by the way. It's it's rough. It's rough. Everybody sounds like everyone's ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, right. But Kyle Higgins does it right, man. He's like, you get drawn in, you're happy. And it feels real. The dialogue is very real. Freaking real. That's exactly what I'm trying to get to. So so we can all kind of identify with this, either having to move back in with your parents or being in debt. He drives for like, it's called driver. It's, it's not Uber. Uber, but yeah, it's Uber. He drives for, he drives an Uber and there's, uh, I think it was an issue too. There's a really funny, just full page description of his day, just showing panel, panel, panel of the various conversations he's having with different passengers. And it just, it's funny. This book makes me actually laugh, Yeah, which is rare. I, so I enjoy funny. that. Well, we have a, uh, a character who sees something in the distance as he's just struggling. He's moving back home. But, but like when he's chilling with his friend, he sees like a, what would you even call it? Like it's like a black hole. 
That's what they call it. It's like, you know? a, it's just kind of hovering off the ground there. It's another one of those like situations where he's going to get superpowers. It doesn't really matter, but he's going to get powers. They're drunk as cool. hell and they stumble out of the bar yeah. and they're like, are we seeing this? Is this real? Yeah. And I wouldn't go up to it. Well, you wouldn't go up to it? No, that's all Damn, you Damn, dude. I'm sucked all into, into another dimension dude, or if something. I, see, <laughs> I know. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What's the um, the Nicolas Cage horror movie? It's on Shutter right now. It's Color a, Out of Space, man. Color Out of Space. That is that's HP right. Lovecraft. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Color Out of Space. Um, that right there would be the... It's like you want it to be... Oh. That's another comet it's, story. That's what I'm saying. I'm doing it here. Right. I have another one here. So you have the... Oh, it's killing me right now. I can't think of it. Space in Seattle, the comet lands, and there's Chronicle. Chronicle. Thank you, Thank okay. you Ryan. Freaking Fire Guy Ryan in the house. God damn that button. I know, dude. I, we're gonna get. We're gonna fix it next time. But Fire Guy Ryan uh, n- understands the importance of Chronicle. First off, there's freaking space needle shots with superhero action happening, and it's amazing. I love it's that one movie. of my favorite. It's one, movies. dude. It's that and like Unbreakable. Neither are Marvel movies, and they're like some of my favorite superhero movies. They're like indie superhero movies. So like I would, book. I would always hope that the comet situation would be like Chronicle. It would be like Radiant Black, right? However, the color out of space, the Nicolas Cage. That type of situation is one that you do not want to deal with. No, it's more like Creep Show, Stephen King status. You know what I'm talking about? No, but. I do know anyways, Lovecraft. Anyways, you know Lovecraft. And I started watching Lovecraft Country, by the way, and that's actually pretty damn good. Shout out Jonathan Majors. All right, another, keep it going. Another story. Um, so they see this comet. He gets these powers. He looks pretty dope. Bada bing. I see the Power Rangers analogy. Sure. It's different. Who cares? Because it's actually... One thing I'll say is the panel placement in this is fantastic. Yes. The, I mean, the art it, all around. I really oh like it. Oh, my gosh. Story. It moves so well, doesn't it? I think the biggest misconception that you could have about a book about this book is it's another superhero origin story why bother why should i read it why do i care now this is one of those ones where you're like oh wow i should care and i should give superhero narratives a chance it works in spite of itself because it really shouldn't this who like like there's every you know every damn superhero the tropes are there. Seen all of this stuff before so yeah. like it's kind of it took kyle higgins man yeah i mean i don't, I don't know what it is it's the first thing i've ever read by him well we put and the power rangers is great I never you know, it. and there is a handful of stories that I added to my poll list in this very show. Hit the subscribe button, comic fam, that were because I got into Radiant Black, and I'm like, oh wow, I I can get that excitement for a dope superhero narrative again, and now I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm in. I'm in again. And there's a villain. Sure. You know, I, it appears that they found like a good black hole or a blue black hole, and apparently some uh, somebody else has found a red version. And this guy is not cool. You get a little more of him in the following issues, and he's he's not a good person. Comic fam, we're chatting comic books. We're chatting comic karma. We're chatting your guys' generosity. We're talking about previews and ordering comics. You guys got to order your comics. You got to pick them up. You got to enjoy them because this is the best medium. It's the best community in the damn world. And we appreciate every single one of you. Hit the subscribe button. We're going to be here for you in another week, maybe two. Probably. You know, we're, we're trying to do this at least twice a month, but we'll see what happens, man. Because I love going live with you, man. It's fun. You know, chilling with the comic fam, joining us on a Thursday night. But I do got to wrap it up because I got a trending video I got to start making. I got to go home. All right. Comic fam, we it's appreciate you. As always. That should be a button on the soundboard. For you. I know I should do responsibly that. Responsibly so I don't have to say it every damn time. No. Geek. Responsibly. You're going to always say it, dude. I love As saying always. It. As always.